When the UX of a game is done right, it just feels natural, it feels good to play, you don't even notice it. I'm Celia Hodent, I was Director of UX at Epic Games, and here are 10 things that you might not have noticed in Fortnite. The HUD. So when you create a game, you want to make sure that players don't have to remember too much stuff, uh, because our memory is quite limited, and we forget things all the time, which is, which is normal. So what we do is we put information in the HUD or in the UI pop-ups so that we reduce what we call the memory load. If you look at the HUD on Fortnite, there's a lot of little things that have been worked on again and again and again to make sure that players will naturally understand what was going on. One of the examples, that if you look at the icon for uh, the weapons, there's always the little a smaller icon in the icon showing you what type of ammunition the weapon is, uh, is taking so that players won't have to remember what type of ammunition they need to craft and so they craft the right ammunition. We try to always show the, um, the control that you need to use to do the action that you want to do as a player in the game. For example, if you want to swap from the building mode to the shooting mode, we show you the keys that you need to press to be able to swap from one mode to the other. This is allowing players to not have to remember these controls and doing the things naturally. Another important information in the HUD is information about your health. We really need players to really have a clear understanding on their level of health, and one of the important things to do is to try to have a green health bar, because if you have a green health bar, then you save the red color, and red is a very good color to contrast with what's happening in the background, to really save for when you're getting damage or when you're about to die. Another element in the HUD that's quite important is showing the material that you have. You know, Fortnite is about building. This is a very important uh, pillar in the game. And so in the HUD, you always see the three types of material that you have, you know, like wood, uh, metal, or, or, or bricks. And this is also very important to, for players to not have to remember how much they have. This is what we call a, uh, an affordance, a cognitive affordance. Um, you see on the HUD what material you have, and it's allowing you to build accordingly. Harvesting. Harvesting is also a very important pillar in Fortnite, and it was very important to convey what players are harvesting and how efficient they are in harvesting. There's also a uh, feature that's really interesting in Fortnite, it's called the weak point feature. So when you harvest, you're gonna have a little pop-up on the screen showing you that, hey, there's a weak point in that element, and if you aim at that weak point, you're gonna harvest faster. This is a really important feature uh, because we don't want players to feel bored when they uh, harvest. So that was a very good uh, addition to Fortnite by designers to make the harvesting pillar more exciting and, and also faster. Whenever you hit the weak point, it makes the little tone that's uh, really soothing. And if you hit several weak points in a row, you hear different uh, music tones. This is also feedback to tell players that, hey, this is a cool thing you need to do. And, you know, polishing the signs, so the sign is, you know, how hard the uh, weak point is going to look like to draw players' attention and to invite them to use it. And the feedback, once players are using it, what do they hear, what is the animation, all that has to be very polished for the features that are really core to the experience of a game to make sure that it's going to be intuitive and offers good UX. Signs and feedback. Signs and feedback, again, are really important to polish so that players can understand just through their experimentation with the game what's going on. So if you look at the signs and feedback when players are building, is really important. If you try to place a wall in, in, a, in an area that you can, you have that red feedback. If you're trying to construct a wall but you don't have enough material for that, you have a feedback. We try to um, show players that if they, they can change material, which is not necessarily easy for players to understand, but if you look at the UI in building, there's a sign telling you you can swap building material by pressing that key. Also, when you place the building, there's a clear feedback that the building is getting built, and we also try to signify to the player how they can edit doors or windows. And this is really crucial in Fortnite because building is a very important pillar in the game. So polishing all this information so that players 
without having to read a ton of tutorial text and try to figure out how this works just through the signs and feedback available in the UI. That's really important. Game feel. When talking about user experience in a game, we look at usability, the ability of the game to be used. But we also look at engageability, the ability of the game to be engaging. The element that we really care about in games is called game feel. We want to make sure that interacting with the game is going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. It's just like pleasurable. We like to just like look at the world evolving in front of us. But also, we love to interact with it. When you buy a loot box, it's not just you click and you open it and you get all the stuff in there, all the cards that you wanted, for example, like in a card pack. In Fortnite, the game feel is very polished in there. For example, the card pack looks like a piñata, which is a metaphor that's fit well the, uh, the world of Fortnite. It's, it's cute, it's fun. And if you're playing on PC, if you move the mouse around, you're going to see the eye of the llama actually following your mouse. This is making the interaction more fun. Also, when you're about to hit the piñata, you're going to see the eye of the llama squinting. It's reacting to what you're doing. And of course, it's talking to you. Once you open the piñata, there's a celebration, and the piñata is still talking to you. All of that is about game feel, making it fun to interact with a specific system or feature. Onboarding. Hearing about how you onboard your players and how you teach them about the mechanics and the systems of your game is really crucial because you want them to be competent and be motivated into using specific features without them feeling it boring to go through tutorials because usually players hate tutorials, but they hate even more feeling that the game is unfair or feeling that they don't really know how to get out of a situation. So you have to place the players in a situation that's going to be meaningful for them to learn about specific mechanics so it doesn't feel that we're trying you know, to, to teach them about something. It feels more about they're part of the game already and they're experimenting stuff in the game to uh, overcome obstacles and through that learn about the game. In Fortnite, it was really important to teach players about the core elements of the game, like combat, building, scavenging, or harvesting, and that you have to develop your home base. This is your, your persona in the game. This is what you progress. This is what you grow. Whenever you start playing Fortnite and save the world, the first thing you do when you take over control is you're in a cave, and then you're going to see enemies, the husks, that are about to get at you. But there's a low wall in front of them. So you see them actually trying to destroy that wall. Immediately it tells you, well, they have, there's walls in Fortnite and enemies are stopped by these walls. So you learn about, oh, this is something that I can use to protect myself. And this is when we actually ensure that players are able to aim and shoot. You are kind of protected because there's a wall, but there's still some pressure, some excitement because the zombies are here. And so you want to, of course, kill them. This is allowing us to make sure that the players are comfortable with controls without you know, uh, being completely disengaged with the coarseness of the game. And the onboarding, another part that's really interesting is at some point you're in a cave and you want to get out of the cave, but you can't get out of the cave. But this is when we tell you, hey, you can actually build stairs. This is how you can get out of stuff, uh, get out of pits, and explore the world. So we put specifically the player in a meaningful situation where they would want to learn about a specific feature, in that case, building. And this is how we teach them the first steps of building. Enemy health bars. In the UI, what we're trying to do is to make sure that players understand very quickly what they have to do and what's dangerous to them. So that's the reason why we usually try to save the red color for something that's really really dangerous right now. So when you're getting hurt or when you're about to die. That's the reason why in Fortnite, for example, uh, in Save the World, the health bar of the enemies are not red, but orange. Orange is still a good color to signify that this is a bad guy, but it's not gonna overload the player with tons of red color. So when the player is getting hurt, the feedback on that you know, is red, and this really stands out. By removing the red color everywhere and just saving it, reserving that color for when something very dangerous is happening to player, it's helping players react faster and understand better what's going on. 
the loading screen. Loading screens are important because, well, the game is going to load and player is going to have to wait. And we hate waiting. This what we call the psychology of waiting. We, we hate waiting. It's painful. So on the loading screen, you need to add stuff that's exciting for players to look at or to play if you're able to add some little mini games in the loading screens. But you can also take that advantage of the loading screen to tell players about something. For example, if you have games with different modes, like in Fortnite, you can use the loading screen for that specific mode to tell players about the objectives of the mode. And this is where you have to keep it sweet and short. If you look at the loading screens in Fortnite, there are three main elements and they focus on the main objectives that players have to do, not necessarily the tiny little details for the players. They're going to figure the details out, they just need to understand the objectives. Accessibility. Accessibility is also very important for a game. You want your game to be able to be played by all sorts of players, including players having some sort of disabilities. So we look at stuff uh, like controls, making sure that uh, players can plug any type of controller on the game. So that's the reason why usually in games we try to offer a complete remapping of control. That's really important for some players. And another example would be the colorblind mode. About 8% of the male population has some sort of colorblindness. So you need to take that into account when you design your game. So be careful with the colors you're using. There's a way to anticipate uh, depending on which sort of colorblindness uh, we're talking about to make sure that the colors are going to contrast. But also usually we try to never only use color to uh, tell about a certain feature. We use color and shape or we're going to use other ways to convey information, but we usually never use color by itself to signify something to players. Searchable objects. It's all about making sure that players don't have to remember all this information that we don't want them to remember because we want them to focus their attention and to remember other information that's really core for the experience of a game. Whenever you go uh, close to a searchable object, you will have a pop-up saying, telling you what key you need to press to search that object. This is a little thing that helps players not to have to remember that specific key. Pinning functionality. The pinning functionality is also a feature that helps players not having to remember a ton of information that we don't care about. If you want to craft a specific weapon in Fortnite, uh, what you can do is you look into your inventory, you're like, oh, I want to craft this thing, but you don't have all the ingredients that you need to craft it right away. So what you can do is you click on the pin functionality, and then it's going to be pinned directly on your HUD. So then on the HUD, players can see all the ingredients they need to gather, and they don't have to remember that information. This is also a way to reduce the memory load, and this is what we call a functional affordance. It's a functionality that developers put in there to help players accomplish their goals. And this is a team effort. The Fortnite team did a great job at polishing a lot of little details so that players will have a great experience playing Fortnite.